Hey, what's up everyone? Pete here, back for another episode. In this video, we're going to discuss how to wire a CNC machine with the root controller. So to make this a bit more manageable and digestible for you guys at home, I have got a small single axis CNC machine that we're going to wire up. Now, the concept of this is to just scale it up to the amount of axes you've got. Typically speaking, the root CNC is a three axis machine, although we have a second Y axis. And the principles that you're gonna to learn today are gonna to be just scaled up and multiplied for how many axis, axes you need. So if you understand the fundamentals going on in this video, you can easily scale this up and conquer any machine you want. So it should be super, super simple. And if I don't do it, I failed in this video. You should go away with the knowledge on how to wire a CNC machine. Right, here is our single axis CNC machine. In this instance, we have got a linear motion with a belt and we wanna convert rotary, uh, a rotary axis into a linear axis. Now this could be a ball screw, it could be rack and pinion, and in our case, we've got a belt on a linear guide. So for this one, we're gonna use a step motor and we're gonna have a step motor driver driving this. And then on this side, we have got a end stop or a positional sensor so we can home the machine each time we power it on. This is optional, but I would highly recommend it. It gives you the ability to home the machine when you power it, power it on, but also um, it stops the machine crashing. So if it ever loses steps and it gets close to the end, it will trigger this and the machine will stop working. So it's kind of a safety net as well as a feature of adding precision between jobs. So the next part of the puzzle is the stepmost driver. In this case, we're using the DM542T. Now this is, these are things are brilliant. Uh, I've got, I'm using this driver on my Route 4 light that you see in the background and my large Route 4. They're brilliant, top quality, and they just work, super simple. So we're gonna plug our step motor into the driver and then that's all the wiring that's necessary to, between the step motor and the step motor driver. It's just the four wires from the motor itself. So the next part of the puzzle is the motion controller. And in this case, we're using the root controller isolated. This is a brilliant six axis, fully isolated motion controller. And naturally part of root CNC, we're gonna use that. And simply put, we just connect our end stop, our inductive end stop into the input port. And then we connect our step motor driver into the step motor port. Now, if you want a bit more information of the wiring of these interfaces, then please check out the wiki. There's some detailed exploded diagrams on what the connections are here, how we map between a four port, four port connector to the six over here, and similarly, how we use an inductive sensor in the root controller. It's not just inductive sensors. You can use mechanical end stops like you see on the root four light over there, as well as on the root four itself. It's you know, you can daisy chain them, you can connect them in parallel depending on the type of switch configurations. So you can have a min and max end stop. And as this controller is fully isolated, we need some power supplies to go with it. One to control the motor and one to control the root controller. So let's go get them. Now, what you see here is the complete system you need to get a CNC working. At the moment, we've got the single axis. On the left here, we've got the power supply that is only used for the step motor driver and step motor. Next we have the root controller itself, what does all the clever maths and all the motion planning and generating all the pulses for the step motor driver. And then over here we've got an additional second power supply that is just responsible for powering the root controller and any inputs going into it. If you want to see a bit more of an exploded view of what's inside the root controller, check out the wiki. There's a block diagram showing you where the isolation zones are and how you can use them for your different features. Because it's not just step motor ports, there's laser, there's RS-485, there's relays, there's MOSFETs. There's a lot in this root controller. So this is what you need to get started. And if you wanna add more, you just add more drivers, more wires to the root controller, and then more axis. Similarly for the end stops. We've got a, mi a max here, but we could also have a min over here in this hole. We can easily connect up and parallel them up in the root controller. Again, more information on the wiki. And if I haven't got any information on the wiki, please ping me a message and I'll try and get it added. So for this demo, we're gonna connect it via USB. The USB port is also isolated, so that's quite handy if you're building a plasma cutter, for example. And I'm gonna control this via the laptop. So I've now connected the laptop via a USB Type-C cable between the laptop and the root controller, and I'm using 
universal G-code sender as my preferred um, G-code sender that can control the CNC. I think it's brilliant, great bit of software, and it's free and open source. So definitely check it out. So at the moment, the machine is all powered on, and we just need to home the machine. So you will notice here, oh, if I can hit the enter. So what you would notice is the axis is now homed, triggered on the inductive sensor and positioned itself accordingly. I've written a small quick G-code command or script or job you might like that just moves this back and forth just to show it working. So if I go over to the computer, I've got my small job there in G-code and if I hit play, perfect, we'll do it once more. And there you have it, one single axis CNC machine. I will go into more details on how I wrote the configuration file that tells what defines the configuration of this machine in a later video, but this one was just purely what is needed, what is the minimal setup needed for a CNC machine. And once you understand that this is the basics, all you have to do is to scale up each part for the number of axes you've got, you can go on and build an even larger machine like you see here. So I hope you liked that video on how to wire a CNC machine, in particular with the root controller, and hopefully this empowers you to go out and build one of these great machines. It's very rewarding when you get to be able to make stuff yourself in your own garage. Now, if you want a bit more information on the actual intricacies of the wiring, please check out the wiki. It's very helpful, and I'm forever adding new information as questions arise to it. So if there isn't anything there, ping me a message. I'm sure I'll happily answer it and get it added to it. On there, it will have example configurations as well as the wiring needed to scale this up into a full-size CNC machine. So if you like this video and you think I've done a good enough job, please hit that like button. Maybe consider subscribing. And if you want to see more of this, I want to do a bit more videos on how to, like how to configure it, how to write your YAML file, how to program it. Uh, stay tuned for more. Um, any comments will help me empower me to do that a bit quicker. But I hope you like that video. And then I think in the next one, we're going to go and get a servo motor connected to the root controller. I know a lot of you have been asking for it. So hope you like it. Consider joining our social channels. Links are below. We've got Facebook, Discord, Discourse, uh, as well as Instagram, just so you can stay up to date with the latest from me. And I hope you like it, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks, bye.